sticky, glossy. How do we make a better stir fry at home? Let's do this, my friends. And while we're at it, let's make my version of chili chicken. Wow. Okay, so stir frying at home. A few trigger points here that uh, can really trip you up, but let's go through it, guys. Let's start first of all with the woks, because you guys ask me about this a lot. So I use often a carbon steel wok, which is one of those woks that you need to season. Um, the important part about the wok, though, is not really the material, it's the shape. So if you have a gas heat source like I do here, you can use one of those traditional round bottomed woks. And that can be carbon steel, it can be cast iron, it can be non-stick. Um, the point is that that round shape uh, sits there with the flame that comes up around it. Now, if you are using a, uh, a glass or an electric or an induction, obviously you can't have a round bottom on your wok. Um, so you're gonna need a flat bottomed wok. And that can also be, um, typically it's harder to get a flat bottomed carbon steel sort of seasoned wok, but it can be that. It can be again, non-stick like this one here. Um, look, I prefer to use the carbon steel seasoned wok. This is a wok that you can use if you stir fry regularly. If you let this guy sit in the cupboard, it will get moldy. <laughs> Sorry, not moldy, rusty. It's not gonna get moldy, it's steel. <laughs> If you let this guy sit in the cupboard, it's gonna get rusty. Um, so it's definitely something that you need to use all the time and oil and season and look after. Um, look, nonstick is just as fine, um, but what you do need to do is get your heat and your cooking technique right. So without further talking, chit chat, <laughs> let's get to that part because that's the other really important part. So what you need to do is, first of all, get things really hot. And I mean like super scary hot, really hot, as hot as you can go. So heat on. Okay, so now we can see a little bit of smoke. We've got it really nice and hot. And the point is we want it hot like that so that when all the ingredients hit the pan, it starts to sear straight away. Because if things are at low temperature and they stew, that's when you kind of get a really wet, soggy stir fry, which we don't want. Okay, anyway, oil goes in. As soon as this goes in, you need to spread it out so that you've got a maximum amount of heat touching each piece of chicken. And now, you want to leave that chicken alone. So what I want to do is get a really beautiful crust on the chicken. I want to get some of that searing happening. And I know that like in just about every other, um, you know, cooking show, everyone's telling you to like hurry up, hurry up and stir fry. It's going to happen quickly. Well, not technically really true with what cooking at home. I don't think like I'm going against the grain here, but whatever. Um, the heat that you have at home just isn't as hot as in a restaurant where you know the chef's just doing this really quickly. So you've got to give each ingredient time to get some heat and to cook. And that way you're going to get yourself a really beautiful, dry, uh, sticky stir fry rather than a soggy one. I'll show you. Okay, so we've been like a good solid two minutes here. That's right, like two minutes just letting that chicken sear and sear and sear. Now I'm gonna get in there and start stir frying. See how we've already got that great color? So I'm just gonna spread the pieces out again on that second side, give them another minute or so. Okay, another little stir fry now. Ah. Just that sizzle, that steam. I mean, this is, these are all the things that you should be getting, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my aromatics. Obviously, I didn't start with garlic or ginger or onion because I didn't want them to burn. So, I'm gonna go in now with my onion. Again, give that onion time to, you know, get a little bit of sort of heat through it. And that also gives the pan time to like heat up again. Every time you add an ingredient, the temperature kind of drops a little bit. So that's, you know, there's always method to the madness. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my garlic. And now the ginger. And 
And finally, just some capsicum. Now let's have a close look in here, guys, before I add in any sauce. So when I pull this back, you can see there's not much like liquidy stuff happening in the bottom there. It's a little bit of oil, but everything is pretty much just searing uh, and getting lots of flavor and heating through, but we're not getting that like stewing kind of situation happening. So now we can go in with our sauces. Right, so I've got some soy sauce and some dark soy sauce. So guys, this is a really great one to keep on hand for any stir fries. It's gonna give you a really beautiful color. So this is a dark sweet soy sauce, which is a little bit thick, but you can also use just regular Chinese dark soy sauce as well. And now, because this is like a kind of sweet, tangy kind of situation, I'm gonna go in with some ketchup as well. You know, I quite often add ketchup to my stir fries. <laughs> I really like it, and I'm not a food snob, so I'm okay with using it. But if you would like to add honey or something instead, um, totally up to you, or just leave it out, but I'm going in with the ketchup. Now a little bit of vinegar for that extra bit of tang. And I wanna balance that out with a little bit of sugar and some chili powder, of course, because, you know, I just love things that are spicy. That's just me. Now toss all that through, and at this point, you might need to add some corn flour, or you might not. So if you've, got, you've had a really high heat, and you've managed to sear everything beautifully, and you don't have too much, like, runny liquid, then leave it out. But, so my situation here, look at that glass. All that sauce is, like, sticking to the chicken perfectly. So if the sauce was too runny, I would add this guy in, which is this corn flour mixed with water. That would thicken everything up um, and make it super sticky and glossy, but we don't need that. Okay, look at that. Oh, such a beautiful color, beautiful texture, all the things. Very simple pantry ingredients, but with the right technique, super special. Let's get that onto a plate. And there you go guys, a very simple version of that restaurant takeout classic, chili chicken, um, and a little primer on, on some wok cooking, the way I like to do it anyway. But let's just get here and make sure that we've done a good job. Mm. I love that smell, ginger, garlic, ah. Oh. Wow. It's sweet, tangy, a little bit spicy, and do you know what? The sauce, the texture of that chicken, everything just on point. Ah, oh, perfection. Yum. Okay, so now let's go in with our... Sorry, just while that heats up, can you smell this? Sure. Oh. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.